Hey, how's it going guys? David here with another figure review and continuing with that four pack of Arkham Asylum reissue figures that I got recently. Here I am to review Batman Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn. And as you can see, this is the incarnation of Harley Quinn from the 2009 Arkham Asylum game by Rocksteady. And ah, uh, I gotta be honest, I think this figure makes Scarecrow look a little bit better by comparison. Now, that's not to say that this figure doesn't come with its own nifty little things, uh, some pros, as it were, but it also features quite an awful lot of cons that left me feeling very underwhelmed. First of all, much like Scarecrow, the paint decals and the sculpting for this figure is actually quite amazing. The paint really stands out very well, especially in the face. I feel like they got the detail just right and it looks like it it's placed in the proper place because usually you have all these figures that when you get up close and personal with them you can see that the paint is a little off or they manage to to, to spray a, a color that isn't supposed to be there in a place that it wasn't supposed to be in and so you get disappointed by that you're like wow that kind of ruins the the detail of the figure but here I feel like the colors are very vibrant and they're in their proper place and like I said especially the head I feel like the paint really stands out in her face paint but also the detail I feel like they captured an awful lot of uh, nifty little details as well as the sculpt much like Scarecrow I feel like the sculpting is very nice and little details like for example here you can see that she has the ID that reads let me see if I could see right there because the lettering is very tiny but it's actually quite accurate it says let me see if I focus there Arkham Asylum Quincy Sharp Warden and that's actually a nod to some of the events that transpire in Arkham Asylum that lead to her having the ID on her, the, the warden's ID on her person. So I think that's actually pretty nifty. And you got the little splash of blood there. Although the blood is a little, I don't know if it's coming across well on camera, but I think that the blood is a little too light. And maybe that's because they don't want to make the figure look a little too graphic, so to speak. Uh, although I don't know how much more graphic you can get with this kind of outfit <laughs> but uh yeah I feel like the blood could have been better if it was like for example this color or maybe just a, just a tiny bit lighter than this but here it almost looks pinkish but another detail that I, caught me by surprise I did not know about this until I actually started playing around with the figure is that these stockings here that she has are actually real stockings they're made out of real cloth they actually move around I don't know if you can see it right there but yeah it's actual cloth it's not just a a paint or a mold in, in, into the plastic it's actual cloth the only detail that kind of kind of weirds me out and I don't know if this was the case with the original version from 2009 because these are re reissues and they supposedly say that there's a new kind of decode to them on the back of the packaging so I'm not sure if this was the case with that version from 2009 but let me move the arm out of the way here um, the skirt is its own piece and it can actually move. It doesn't come off, but it does move up high enough that you can, well, you know, you get the idea there. And I know Arkham Asylum is catered to that PG-13 audience because it's supposed to be a grittier Batman, but still trying to uh, stay in touch with the roots of the original character from the comic books. But this right here is suggestive enough. Now you're going to make the skirt actually move up high enough to where you know, multiple uses can come to mind with this figure for young adolescent boys. I mean, I feel kind of dirty handling this figure, even though I won't be handling her too much, given my complaints about the figure itself. Which, I guess, I'll go ahead and talk about now, because, unfortunately, that's about it for the things that I really dig about this figure. Because, much like Scarecrow, she is somewhat molded in a form to where... DC Collectible, or at the time DC Direct, wanted to capture the essence of the character so much so that if you look at her carefully, she is sculpted in a way where she has this sassy, I don't give a shit type of pose, where she's slanted and bent in a certain way to make her look, like I said, very sassy and with an attitude, that it also limits, much like Scarecrow, some of the articulation as well as some of the possibility for the figure. The whole purpose of having action figures is to make them seem like they have action otherwise they're practically statues and I feel like Harley Quinn here is even more of a statue than Scarecrow was because despite having the 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 slouch Scarecrow was a bit more posable whereas 
Harley Quinn here, let's say for example her legs, her legs are stilted in this position, so much so that she barely has any articulation whatsoever. She can move at the top of the leg forwards, oh man that's actually backwards, about that far and forwards only about that far. Her pelvic area is molded in a way that that only allows that uh, that much range of mobility. And then you also got a joint here in the knee that bends about that far. And that's it. That's literally it for the legs. There's no ankle, there's no upper thigh. It, this piece is actually supposed to stay still so it doesn't move. And over here, I was led to believe that this was a thigh swivel, so I'm like, okay, that, that's kind of neat. But actually, this is a flaw within the figure that I feel I got in my version of the figure only. If you guys do have this figure, whether it be the 2009 version or the new reissue, if you manage to buy the 4-pack, please let me know if this is a common occurrence or if it's just my figure personally because the joint here is supposed to be what I like to call a propri propri <laughs> I can't pronounce it a proprietary peg to where it's molded in a way that it fits into that hole like a key and it's not supposed to move but unfortunately mine came undone for some reason the glue didn't stick very well or whatever it was whatever kind of adhesive was being used to hold it and if it wasn't for the stocking the actual cloth stocking that is actually attached to this upper thigh piece that I would lose this leg all over the place and oh my god look at that <laughs> but yeah, if it wasn't for the stocking, I would definitely be losing the leg all the time. But it keeps undoing itself, and I don't know if that's just my figure, or if this was, like I said, a common occurrence with various of the Harley Quinn figures from the Arkham Asylum game. It, that isn't the case for the other leg. That leg is, like I said, stuck, and I don't know if that that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, I guess for quality testing purposes, it's a good thing, but still, there's almost no... Uh, almost no articulation in her legs whatsoever that makes her almost a bit of a t uh, of a statue. Other than that, you got no torso articulation, so you can't rotate the torso or even bend it. You do have a a actually hold on, you got no, you just got a ball joint. For a second there, I thought that that was the second joint that moves the shoulder inwards and outwards like some other figures do, but no, it's just a ball joint that rotates the figure. 360 degrees vertically as well as inwards and outwards, but because of how her sleeves are molded, it's hindered right about there. She also has a bicep joint, so that's kind of nice. She also bends at the elbow about that far, and I believe it is ratcheted. Uh, actually, no. Ah, it's a little bit ratcheted, and actually the same thing goes for her knee. Her knee is ratcheted as well, and she does have a wrist swivel, but that's actually about it for the arms, and Despite liking the sculpting and the detail for the figure, I feel like her arms are just a little flimsy. I know that that's practically how her arms are in the game in terms of her design, but they feel very flimsy, especially when they're bent a certain way to where it looks like she's disjointed and and just weirdly proportioned, like right there. Of course, it's the same thing for the other arm in terms of the articulation. And last but not least, her head can rotate 360 degrees at the neck. But unfortunately, much like the legs, that is it. There's no ball joint that allows the head to pivot up and down, so all she can say is no. She is a no woman. Uh, which is kind of funny, considering her character and her loyalty to the Joker. All she can say is no. And again, that's very disappointing. And even so, the way that her hair is molded, it sometimes gets stuck on the collar. And you can actually risk breaking it. I've had my fair share of scares with the hair breaking off like right here or, or maybe the tips so I wouldn't recommend doing that uh, too often but it can rotate 306 degrees horizontally but other than that that is it so articulation is even more disappointing than with Scarecrow in my opinion now I honestly do not know why I even set her down to do this but as you can tell she comes with an accessory she comes with this gun which is the Titan gun from the game and I was actually expecting this to be an accessory for the Joker based on the way that the figures were packaged in that 4-pack. But turns out that Harley Quinn is the only one with a hand that is molded to hold a gun. And Joker simply just isn't. So I take it that it's actually for meant for Harley Quinn. Now the gun itself, if I can pry it out of her decrepit hands here. The gun itself, it, you know, it's nice. It's not very well detailed, but it does have some cool paint applications. So I'm glad that they got that right. But the only thing that bugs me about this gun is the fact that it's actually, it's sculpted in a way that just feels odd. 
And by itself, it, it looks nice, but when you fit it into her hand, not only is it tough to get her index finger to go inside of the actual trigger, because I'm telling you, it's very tough, and it's also kind of scary because I don't want to risk breaking her index finger, but there you go. Even when you do fit it in, it just looks odd. Especially when you pose her in a way where she's supposed to is supposed to be aiming the gun to shoot somebody. Look at that. That just looks very strange. Rick from The Walking Dead looks it seems to have better aim than she does holding a gun like this. Because it just it just looks like they didn't think the gun through when it came to how it was gonna look when she was holding it. By itself it looks fine, but I feel like it, Joker would have been better off with this accessory than her. The only way to have the figure pull off a pose to where it, she can pull off holding the gun is in that I don't care pose to where you got one hand on the hip and then one hand downwards like this and give the camera some good old fashioned sassy attitude that we've known Harley Quinn to have. I'm just make sure that she can stand to actually show such an attitude. And there we go. So to reiterate, despite coming with some really good paint applications and detail and sculpt as well as some nifty little surprises, despite the awkward inappropriate one, I feel very underwhelmed with Harley Quinn here. I was hoping for a really cool action figure but instead I got a rather good looking statuesque type of figure that will end up remaining on my shelf and perhaps on somebody else's shelf after me. And for that, I give Batman Arkham Asylum Harley Quinn a 6 out of 10. It's an okay figure, but I feel like I should have played with her first before Scarecrow because it, it, after having played with Scarecrow first, Scarecrow himself looks a little bit better by comparison. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more upcoming figure reviews, and I'll see you guys later.